Okay, so we have more SHSAT reading passage practice. Now again, I recommend that you pause this video, maximize the screen, so you can read this passage and then follow along uh, as we work through the questions for this passage. So again, I'm going to assume that you have already read this, this passage. Okay, so number 33 is a pretty basic starting question. They want to know what is this passage about? And to figure that out, um, I just I always skim this first paragraph right here to get a sense of the topic, and then I look for maybe headings throughout the rest of the topic to understand what's happening. And just from that picture, we can tell the answer, right? Because here they're introducing um, the history of trade in the region of of Africa, and specifically um, th that the effect of the Swahili on that, that period. It's a period where there was cultural and, and artistic revival, right? Cultural and artistic revival in European countries because, it, and it says it right here, um, that they were able to provide these groups, the Swahili traders were able to provide them with so much, um, with materials, gold, ivory, and rock crystals to actually make this cultural and artistic revival. And then it says, over here, it's talking about the background behind that, and then talks about the, the, this process of development. So basically, if you look at A, B, C, and D, and E, um, uh, A looks looks really important. It's, a, it's, it's almost a taker, which is the role played by the Swahili in international trade in 9th and 10th centuries. That's pretty close. Check that one off. B says the Swahili contribution to a revival of African art and culture. That's a really tricky one because I'm sure that they did actually contribute to the revival of African art and culture, but really this article is about taking the African materials and the trade to revive European and European culture, right? So not, not to revive African, but European culture. C says the effect of Swahili traders on the art of 10th century Europe Yes, that's partially true, but only partially. They're very careful with their language here. Um, it was much this this whole trade process was about much more than art. So art can't be enough, right? It was also about culture. D says the sailing and boat building skills. No, there's almost no mention of that except for um, here they talk about where they got started in their trading. How the Swahili traders used their wealth to develop their homeland. We don't hear much about that. So A is the choice I'm going to pick. Who were the Swahili's first trading partners? Okay, so here it says it um, that they, for centuries before trading with Europe, they had sailed the African coast in small sea-worthy boats of their own design. So that implies that their first trading partners were other African societies, right? If they're going up and down the coast, trading, 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 they're going to actually be trading with those neighboring states. 35 says, what was the most important in enabling the Swahili to establish their trade along the East African coast? And it says it right here. They were expert navigators. Their knowledge of the dangerous coastal waters enabled them to expand their influence along 3,000 kilometers of East African coastline. So it was their knowledge of the coastal waters that helped them so much, and that's choice B. 36 says, what is an example of the goods sought by traders from the Red Sea? So, so they, they even outline it right here, some of the, the main goods that were, were being sought after, and they reaffirm it right here. Um, Muslim traders from the Red Sea came to East, African, East Africa seeking African gold, ivory, and crystals to sell in Mediterranean Europe. So ivory was one of the main things they were seeking. It says, what was the most likely location for the Swahili to exchange gold for Chinese pottery? This is a very tricky question because um, here it says, the Swahili began trading with Persian Gulf merchants who in turn traded with China. So it, it seems to be implied there that, that the Swahili people were, were going to the Persian Gulf to meet these merchants and and trade with them, and then they would go in and turn and, and trade with China. And that very well may have happened. 
Um, but but it says, I think it's, it's kind of right here, that the Muslim traders came from the Red from the Red Sea came to East Africa seeking gold, ivory, and crystals. So it's it's implying that people came to East Africa to trade with these sailors. So out of our choices here, um, I would choose B that most of these trades took place on the coast of East Africa, even though that we do mention the Red Sea and the Persian Persian Gulf. They, since they don't specifically say that that they traveled outside of the East African coastline, we're, we're not able to infer that. And so that's a really, I mean, that's debatable, that one. Uh, I don't think the passage really addresses this question very well. And sometimes you'll see questions like this, which just seem debatable. Now, 38 says, In what way were Swahili traders involved in the artistic revival in 10th century Europe? Well, that goes back to the very opening paragraph, where we said that the revival happened, let me scroll up, the revival happened here because the people of, of Europe, European countries, were able to get these these supplies from the Swahili and then use that in order to help the artistic and cultural revival. So, uh, and actually F says it, right? The materials they traded with Muslim traders from the Red Sea were used in the European revival. That's correct. Um, and here it says they sold African gold, ivory, and crystals to the Europeans in exchange for the arts and crafts. Um, well, that's true, right? But we should we can even say specifically the reason they were trading these things. Um, well, I'm sorry, that may have been true. We don't know if, how they were exchanging. It's probably for some form of money or money or I don't know. It could be almost anything. Uh, they might have hinted to that in the article. It's not even relevant because. F is, and it takes us even further, F tells us why they were trading and how the the effect of that, what the effect of the trading was, right? Um, right, they use those materials for the, the Europeans use those materials for the revival. Next is they traded salt, cloth, and iron products. Well, um, even, even if that is true, I, and I, we can go back and look, even if that is true, that's for African goods, it looks like, right? They traded with China. Um, and I don't see it mentioning, oh, here it is. It's true they traded salt, cloth, and iron for a wide range of goods from groups living in the African. So they used salt, cloth, and iron to, to trade within Africa and then use those trades elsewhere. Um, so that's out. That's, that, that does not really have to really do directly with the European revival. We don't know how if they offer techniques or advice. That's J and K says... Their network introduced artistic practices of the Chinese. Then I'm going to talk about that. So F is the only reasonable answer there as well. So I'll scroll up. Those are the questions for this passage. Hope that helps. Thank. Thanks.